Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with another Minx Monday Q&A, and before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently using. That is the Chanel Oak Case in the black caviar leather with the chevron detailing and the silver hardware. I've been using this quite a bit off and on for the last couple of weeks, and I will be doing a review on it later this month, so keep an eye out if you guys are interested. Okay, so let's get started with the very first question, shall we? Mm <clears throat> excuse me, from Krista K. What size keep all would you recommend for a two, three, four day weekend? The 45, the 50, or the 55? I'm not familiar with how they pack or how they handle. I'm five foot two and a hundred pounds. Uh, this is a great question. Personally, I think that the 45 is perfect for longer weekends. I know that's what I choose to use uh, over my 55 whenever I'm going out for a few days. Uh, and I feel that it's not too small. It's not too big. Uh, it's, you know, I mean, you're able to carry it with ease. If you tend to carry a little a little bit more and you want to make sure that all of your bases are covered make sure you have the right outfits and whatnot um a 50 would also be great i think that the 55 might be a little too large for your frame uh and it might end up you know looking a little too overwhelming uh plus it tends to get pretty heavy so even if you don't pack the 55 completely to the brim it still gets pretty heavy uh, but personally i like the 45 it's very very comfortable perfect to carry and uh, it doesn't take up too much space. So I would have to go with the 45 in my personal opinion. Uh, okay. Robin Russell, quick question. Do you like, do you not like Prada? Why or why not? Um, okay. <clears throat> so I'm not too keen on Prada. Um, I do appreciate the silhouettes of some of their handbags. I absolutely am in love with, uh, with some of the bags. I think that they're fabulous. But I don't feel that their quality justifies their price. Um, I've had a few SLGs from Prada. And I've always told you guys that I'm the type of person that I want to start out with something small from a different fashion house to see if I want to end up purchasing a larger handbag and, you know, spending that kind of money. And uh, one of the SLGs worked out fine, but one of them ended up wearing way too quickly. And, uh, you know, I didn't really like the, the wear and tear on it, you know, for, for being, I think it was only like six, six months old. I think maybe it was less. It was a wallet. So I didn't get that warm and fuzzy feeling from it. And, uh, I just, you know, you hear about horror stories about how the Safiano leather in particular just wears out so badly on the corners, even though the Safiano leather is very, very sturdy. Um, just their edging just isn't the best and their handles, uh, tend to kind of just not wear so well. So for that matter, um, I am not, I personally am not too keen on them, but I do appreciate their silhouettes and things like that, but they're not for me. Uh, okay. Uh, Louis 1228. I want one Damier Ben and one monogram bag for the monogram bag. I'm debating between the Pouchette Matisse or the Speedy Bandolier. I know you prefer the regular Speedy version, but just between the style and functionality, which would you choose? I'm considering getting the Pouchette Matisse in mono and the Speedy Bandolier in Damier Ben, but I prefer the Viquetta strap on the monogram. Also, what would you recommend for a good Damier Ben bag with the exception of the Neverfull? Uh, okay. So it sounds like you already have a preference. Um, because of the Viquetta strap. So for that matter, I would go with a, with a speedy bandolier because it's, I mean, you know, always follow your instinct. Uh, but personally between the two, you guys know that, um, even though I'm not a fan for the speedy bandolier in my own personal collection, I definitely appreciate its vers its, uh, versatility. But between the two, I, I prefer this, the Pouchette Matisse. Uh, I really love this bag. I'm crazy about it. And, um, to be honest, when I was at the boutique, I thought that the canvas strap looked kind of funky on it. I didn't think it really went well with it. And then um, when I tried on the Vaquetta strap with it, I thought it looked it totally, I was just like, oh no, that doesn't work. And uh, to be honest, I'm crazy about the canvas uh, strap because it's worry-free. I don't have to worry about patina. I don't have to worry about water spots or anything like that. Really, the only Vaquetta that you have to worry about is this and this little guy. These don't get too much wear on them. Um, but I really like this because it has compartments. And so I don't have to worry about a, um, a purse organizer, even though you guys know I'm not a fan on those either, but I like the fact that it has, you know, it has different compartments for it. And I really, I really like that. Um, you know, it's not just an open, um, an open space. And I, even though I am crazy about speedies and I think they're fantastic, I would have to say the Pouchette Matisse for me is, uh, the preference between the bandolier and, uh, and this one. But, uh, again, follow your instinct. Uh, you know, if you're crazy about the Vaquetta strap, then go for the bandolier. Um, and as far as Demi Ben bags go, besides the Neverfull, 
Um, let's see. There's actually three that uh, I think would be a good option. The Sienna PM or MM because it has versatility. It has a crossbody strap, which I think is uh, perfect. Uh, another one that I saw was one that we talked about or that you know, some people left comments on last week's video, which is the Normandy. I can't remember the price tag on it, but it's a very, very pretty bag. And there's another one that I saw, which is called the Brompton. I think it retails for 2300 here in the States or something like that. It's a little pricey for a canvas bag, but it also has a, um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's crossbody actually. I think it's just an extra shoulder strap because it's tends to be like a hand carry bag. I don't know. But um, I would have to say that the Sienna is another great option. A lot of people that have that bag rave about it because it's so versatile. So uh, that's what I would do. But it sounds to me like you already made up your mind. Okay. Sarah Chaudre. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, I have a question for Minx Monday. I've recently been in really interested in adding a Birkin to my collection. I remember you recently mentioned that you were also thinking about it. If you ever decided to go for it, would you buy, try to buy it from the boutique or would you, or would you go the pre-loved route? Um, okay, so <laughs> remember how I told you guys, I think it was last week or a few weeks ago, that I went into the boutique to kind of get a little bit more information about a Birkin and you know how to go about it. Um, the sales associate said that I had to get used to my, or her words, not mine. I had to get used to the Hermes lifestyle. So that meant that I would have to purchase shoes, perfumes, jewelry, uh, housewares. And then, uh, that way they can see that I'm crazy about the label and, or the brand. And then, uh, they can present my portfolio to their manager and then they can see if I'm suitable to, <laughs> to get a Birkin, um, or to get the opportunity to be on the list for a Birkin. Uh, that's when my hubby was like, what? But regardless, I digress. Uh, so for that matter, I'm not too keen on their shoes and I don't really, uh, I'm not too crazy about their, their housewares. Obviously I like some of their jewelry and I do like their perfumes. But because <laughs> it seems like I wouldn't be the ideal candidate, I think it would end up being pre-loved route for me. <laughs> and um, I, uh, I actually had the opportunity to buy, I've had two that I could have gotten last week and I just decided against them. Um, I just, I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I think, you know, I think they're beautiful. I think they're fabulous silhouettes. And I think I will add one to my collection in the future. But as of right now, um, I'm still kind of, I'm still kind of hesitant on it. I don't know why. I don't know why. I think it's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. And we all know how I acted with the jumbo and, you know, the, the thoughts that were going on through my head. So I think that's probably why. Uh, but I, I say go for it. If that is your dream bag, if that is your holy grail bag, then go for it. Uh, it is a beautiful bag. And um, it's just, I mean, the leather is amazing amazing. And, um, yeah, so I would go for it. If that's what, if that's what your heart, you know, sings for, then go for it. Uh, okay. Uh, who am I? Who am I? Is the, is the monogram canvas on your sunglass case MM rougher than the Damien, Damien version of the item? I've had the Azure for a few months and I just snatched up the monogram on the website. It arrived today and it feels quite a lot rougher. Also, a little bit of glazing is peeling off. What? But honestly, this is so hard to find. I might lower my standards this one time. Okay, so real quick, if the glazing is already peeling off and you just got it, mm -mm. personally, I would just, you know, I would see if they can find you another one. Um, just call the, or call the boutique that you got, or call the boutique the closest to you and tell them what's going on um, because that, that shouldn't happen. But I brought out both of mine. So here's the monogram and here is my Demi Azure. Now, both of mine are a little bit older and they actually feel exactly the same. Yeah, they feel exactly, exactly the same. Uh, but I did notice, dun, 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 ah, do you hear that on my voice? I have color transfer bad on my Demi Azure one. Do you guys see that right there? Right there. I don't even have a blue bag. I don't even have... Besides my Celine, that's the only black lined bag I have. And I don't even use that in there. And it's already starting to show the wear on there. And you can really see the color trans. I don't know if you guys can see it, if it's picking it up, but you can see it right around the edges, which is kind of funky because like I said before, I don't have 
a black leather bag that I use this with, but yeah. Um, no, they feel exactly the same. And, uh, you know, someone asked me if this was going to be discontinued. Uh, I don't think so. When I talked to my sales associate, she said that they've just, um, run really low on them, but they will be, um, putting them back. You know, they'll, they'll slowly start to come back, um, to availability. Did I say that right? <laughs> but no, they feel exactly the same, but yes. Again, mine are a little bit older. Uh, okay, the Kenzang, hopefully I said that right. Uh, what Louis Vuitton SLGs do you still have and reason for keeping them over the ones you have sold? Okay, so I have actually sold quite a bit of my SLGs. And the main reason that is, is because I just wasn't, um, they weren't rotating enough. I had some that would sit there for over a year without being used. And uh, even though I've loved every single piece I've ever had in my collection, I don't want to have it just sit there. I would rather someone enjoy it that really likes it and get use out of it rather than just, you know, collecting dust in its little dust bag. Um, but yeah, I've, even though, like I said before, my collection has, my SLG collection has really dwindled down. Uh, the reason why I kept them is because, again, I was able to rotate through the ones that I kept and it just seems like it's a little bit easier. Um, I think I got very carried away, um, um, a few years ago, I just was buying and buying and buying without thinking of, is this really what I need in my lifestyle? You know? And I was just, I went way overboard and, uh, it got to the point where it was like overwhelmed. It was overwhelming to be honest. It was kind of ridiculous, uh, for me anyways. And, um, that's why I ended up selling some of the things. And now I'm really happy with the collection that I have. I have a few more items that, uh, will be leaving out of my collection, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, very happy with the pieces that I have kept. Uh, okay. Nicholas Humphrey. Last year I was traveling with my brand new Keepall 45 and monogram, and I put the bag under the seat in front of me as per the instructions of the flight attendant. Little did I know that the floor was wet and my brand new Keepall was water damaged. Now I've stayed away from monogram with the Keta. Is this an irrational fear or should I give it a try again? Uh, the way that I feel about it, that any, any lux, any luxury travel luggage piece, you have to think of a worst case scenario. Um, you know, unless you have a private jet and you have, uh, you know, without having to worry about checking in your bag, uh, even if it's small enough to carry, um, or anything like that, you just have to think of the worst case scenario. And I think, you know, it, it's bound to happen whether you have the harder suitcases or whether you have key balls or things like that. I think it's bound to happen. And, uh, I remember when I was terrified of using my key ball 55 when we were in Paris for the first time because of the vaquetta, it was just beautiful vaquetta. And, uh, it was raining when we got off, <laughs> out of the airport and I was just like, oh my goodness, my key ball is going to get damaged. It's going to have this, this and that. And it did. It got some water, you know, got some water damage to it. But, you know, I just really enjoyed it. I really like the key balls and traveling with them. So I think you just ha kind of have to put that in the back of your mind that th something's going to happen and uh, not to worry too much about it. And if it's, if it's something that you don't want to have to worry about, you can always go with the Damier Ben or the Damier Graffite. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about any Vaquetta whatsoever. But honestly, it has to, it has to be in the back of your mind that something like that is going to happen. Definitely. Especially because some people, um, are just, you know, like I said before, some, some pieces you're able to check in and some pieces you aren't. And sometimes, you know, people aren't very careful. They could care less if it's a luxury piece of luggage or not. So just keep that in the back of your mind. I would definitely just, you know, love it and, uh, just don't even worry about it. Just enjoy the piece. Uh, okay. Next question. Uh, the cat melon, do you insure handbags? Uh, I've actually had this question asked quite a bit and the answer is yes. Um, on the paperwork, it says handbag collection and other leather goods. And uh, I constantly have to update it, if, especially if I end up selling an item from my collection or if I add an item to my collection. It just gives me peace of mind uh, that I have insurance on uh, on most of my items because you never know. And uh, I always have to, I have to make sure I have the right paperwork for it. Like, um, you know, any kind of uh, receipts, um, you know, proofs of per obviously proof of purchase. Uh, and there's just a lot of paperwork that goes into it. Or you can also go uh, with your, um, 
you know, you can go with an outside company or you can go with the homeowner's insurance or stuff like that. But, you know, I always say it's better to be safe than sorry. And, um, you know, some pieces you, if God forbid something happens, but some pieces you're not going to be able to, uh, get, you know, again, because they're very limited and things like that. But at least, you know, that all that money isn't down the drain. You know what I mean? So again, you never know, um, with fires or burglary or anything like that. So yes, I have, I do insure my handbags. Uh, okay. Next question. Live your life. 08101. Um, just a question. Do you still have your Celine Phantom? And if you do, is it a bag you enjoy? Yes. Uh, using yes. And yes, my Phantom is down there, um, on the corner there. I love that bag. Um, I don't use it, you know, all the time. It's not something that I'm constantly grabbing, but I, I thoroughly enjoy using that handbag. I think, I don't know. I feel like <laughs> it's going to sound really, really, really stupid, but I feel like I have superpowers when I have it. I don't know why superpowers really. Um, but I don't know. I just get such a kick out of using that bag. It's so, I mean, I'm able to fit everything in there. I love, I absolutely love the feel of the leather that the Phantom has. And I am just, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to add another Celine piece to my collection. Um, that's, you know, between the Celine and Yves Saint Laurent or Saint Laurent, those are the two brands that have really just caught my eye immensely. Uh, okay, Maxine LV. Will you be doing a wear and tear on your Louis Vuitton six key holder? Since you love it, since you love that item so much, Will you get it repaired if it starts to show wear? If not, what will you do? Uh, and this is also a similar question that 408 California 408 had. Um, okay, oh, this is funny yeah, too because I, I was actually talking about this with uh, my girlfriend. Okay, so I will be doing a wear and tear video on this little guy. I use it every single day and I'm crazy about it. I've told you guys that if my collection were to completely go away, this is the only item that I would never, ever get rid of. Um, and there is definitely wear starting to show. Um, you probably just saw it right there. It's starting to peel right here and it's starting to kind of, not crack on the varnish right there. And I should take it in for repair, but I probably won't end up repairing it. And that's because I feel that, um, you know, even if you get it repaired, there's a chance that it'll end up cracking in the same spot over and over again, especially if it's an item that you use quite a bit. So whether it's a six key holder or whether it's a wallet, something that you're constantly opening up, I think it'll end up just wearing into it. Um, and if it starts to get into the canvas, then I will have to retire this baby, not get rid of it, but I will have to retire it and end up, uh, looking for something else to use for my keys. Um, would I end up getting another one of these? Probably not, especially with all the concerns that we've been talking about in the last couple of weeks with Minx Mondays. Um, and I just don't want, honestly, I don't want to have to deal with it. Um, and I talked, I told you guys a few weeks ago that, was it a few weeks ago that the, uh, the Chanel six key holder really has intrigued me. Um, my girlfriend talks about it very, very highly. And then I've, I've watched so many YouTube videos on it. When we were at the boutique last, uh, my hubby, he, he was just like, go ahead, get it, get it, get it. You should get it, you know, replace this, this one. He, because the Chanel one is a little bit shorter. This one's a little bit taller. And, um, I, you know, I just, I don't know. I can't bring myself to get rid of it, but if it starts to show wear and it starts to crack into the canvas, I don't want, obviously I don't, I don't, I don't want to carry it with me, but I just, I love this item so, so much and I rave about it so much, but I probably wouldn't end up replacing it with another LV one again because of all the issues, unless I can find a pre-loved one from 2000 or 2010 that I told, 2011 or 2010 that I told you guys about in a few weeks, uh, a few weeks ago in, in a video. Um, but yeah, I don't know, but you can definitely see the wear and it's just a matter of time that it starts to kind of get into the canvas, I think. <laughs> I don't even know how sad that makes me because <laughs> I don't want to get rid of it. I love this item so much and it's just, it's very, very special to me. But yeah, so I don't know. I, I'm looking at other ones. Um, my hubby's a, a huge fan of the Chanel one and a lot of my other, <laughs> a lot of my girlfriends are like, go, oh, go for it, get it, get it. But I just, I can't, I, I feel like I get all nervous thinking about replacing that six key but we'll see. Uh, okay. Saint Tropez for me. Why do you think unboxing videos get the most thumbs down? Does it bother you? 
Um, why do I think unboxing videos get the most thumbs down? Um, it could be a combination of a few things. I think, uh, either people really don't like the item that you're, you're unboxing, you know, maybe they're not crazy about it, so they thumbs down it. Um, another thing is, is that I think that a lot of people might think that unboxing videos are bragging. It's, it's your way of bragging. And, uh, I, you know, I don't feel that way. You know, I think, um, if you're part of a community and you're really excited about a wallet, if you're really excited about a handbag, you just want to share it with people that have the same type of likes as you do. Of course, not everyone's going to agree. And some people, you know, um, just, you know, they're just not fans of luxury goods in general. Um, but you know, I, I like being able to come on here and share with you guys like what I like, you know, and yes, unboxing videos get major, major thumbs down, but it doesn't bother me at all. And I think another thing is, uh, especially for my videos, I think that when they open up an unboxing video, they'll see the background and maybe they have an idea of the type of person that I am, you know, that, you know, that I'm bragging again or that I'm doing stuff like that, but I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm pretty much like, Oh, look what I got. And I get all like squealy, like, like a five-year-old kind of excited about, you know, their, their first Barbie or something like that. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe not, but that's the only thing that I can think of. Uh, okay. And then I have a few more. Then the next person wanted to remain anonymous. Uh, would you recommend Chanel over Louis Vuitton? If so, what makes them better? Uh, this is a, this is a tough question. Um, I wouldn't say better I because it's all a matter of personal preference. Whether you prefer Louis Vuitton over Chanel or vice versa, it's all a matter of whatever makes you happy and whatever makes your heart sing. Um, but I will have to say that I, I, some Chanel pieces um, are definitely overpriced compared to Louis Vuitton pieces, whether they're canvas or all leather. Um, and I just feel that if cared for properly, a leather piece will outlive a canvas piece, in my opinion. And that's a little unfair because that's, I mean, that's like comparing apples and oranges. Um, but I just feel that they, it might wear a little bit better. And uh, obviously you can condition it and do things like that. Um, but I just, I don't know. I feel that it'll last a little bit longer, uh, you know, but then again, you hear about canvas pieces that have been around since the eighties and they look, I mean, immaculate, you know? So, um, I just, I don't know. I really like the feeling that if you're going to spend the type of money that you're going to be spending at Chanel, that the, most of the entire line for handbags and SLGs is leather. And that, you know, that, that really, you know, that makes me happy because I know that I'm going to be getting the quality of the leather, um, and not having to worry too much about the leather cracking or anything like that, because obviously you can always condition leather. Um, but I, you know, like I said before, I wouldn't say it's a better fashion house. Uh, they just have different, um, you know, different types of details for each fashion house. And I think that they're both fantastic. I love the history of both of them. And again, it's all just per, uh, personal preference and whatever makes your heart sing. That's what you should end up going for. But, um, both of them have been around for a very, very long time. And, um, you know, they're just, I think they're both fabulous. Okay. And then the last question that I have is from Lindsay 0210. Would you ever get plastic surgery or Botox? <laughs> um, okay. So would I ever get plastic surgery or Botox? Probably not. Um, I probably wouldn't obviously never say never. Um, but not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just not my personal preference. Everyone to each their own, they could do whatever they want to themselves. Uh, you know, who am I to judge? Um, but I, you know, as far as Botox go, uh, goes, I have laugh lines really badly. And I think that my age shows <laughs> on my face, uh, you know, because if I wasn't laughing, like, can I keep, I'm, I'm looking over here. So sorry if I'm, you know, if it looks kind of funky, I can't, <laughs> I can't even stop smiling, but I have laugh lines right here and I do have crow's feet. You could see them right here, especially when I laugh, they kind of just you know, bunch up. And I think because I tend to frown sometimes I have this little, <laughs> this little crease right here, but it doesn't bother me. Um, I think, you know, age is just a number and some people want to show their age and some people don't. And it's all a matter of personal preference, but I personally probably wouldn't. Um, I'm happy with the laugh lines. I'm happy with the roadmaps <laughs> on my face, if you will. Um, but no, it's, it doesn't bother me. But like I said before, never say never, but as of right now, it's not something that, um, that I would end up doing. No. Uh, all right, you guys. So that does it for Minx Monday Q and A. Thank you guys so much for all of the wonderful questions. I hope I was able to help. 
I'm looking through to make sure that I answered everything I did. Uh, and then I will be actually filming a few videos, um, today because I have a fairly busy week. So if you guys see the same makeup on me, you know why. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for all the wonderful questions. Again, I hope I was able to help and I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.